Hello everyone, my name is Tam and I'm a machine learning engineer working in Silicon Valley. So for today, I'm breaking it down into five parts. First, what is a machine learning engineer? Then we'll go into my undergrad background, then my graduate journey, next internships and full time, and lastly, tips and takeaways. I'm not sugarcoating things. I'm gonna be real with you in my trials and errors, what my thought process was in those moments, my learning lessons, and my perspective now looking back. So what is a machine learning engineer? Well, you might have already seen videos on how to become a software engineer or full stack developer or even a data scientist, but not so many for a machine learning engineer. That's because the role of a machine learning engineer is relatively new. With AI's recent explosion in popularity, so has the growth of the role of a machine learning engineer. And that is in brief, a type of software engineer that designs, builds, and deploys machine learning models while also taking care of all of the other components in the machine learning pipeline. And that includes the training data to the inference logic and evaluation of your model's performance. This is the type of topic that can have a way more elaborate explanation. So let me know if that's something you guys would be interested in. So if it's such a new field, how did I get into it? Well, let's take it back to my college days. I did my undergrad at UC Berkeley, go Bears! And when I started in 2011, there wasn't a program for machine learning or AI. If you remember, the rebirth of machine learning didn't happen until 2012 with the advent of ImageNet and AlexNet. So it made sense that it wasn't offered until its potential and plausibility was confirmed. So what did I study instead? I studied mathematics, the mother of all scientific fields the universal language. Specifically, my degree was called Applied Mathematics, which was interestingly a Bachelor's of Arts degree instead of a Bachelor's of Science degree. Anywho, the degree was composed of pure math classes like linear algebra, discrete math, complex algebra, and so forth. These courses definitely helped establish a solid foundation for me to eventually transition to machine learning, but it's not necessary to have that advanced level of maths knowledge. Like yeah, know your calculus and your matrix operations, but beyond that, you won't really need those proof writing skills that math typically gets into. Getting a degree in math, however, was great for critical thinking skills and sorting your thoughts and organizing your reasoning to solve problems well. The other portion of my applied mathematics degree was selecting which field I would want to apply it into. And the ones I was deciding between was computer science or economics. Computer science was attractive because then I could get into data science, do business analysis, be at the intersection of decision making and being analytical. Econ was attractive because then it would set me on the path of becoming an actuary. An actuary is like a mathematician or a statistician for the insurance industry. You're like, actuary? Huh? I thought we were talking about machine learning engineer. Okay, stick with me. You're gonna see where this goes. So here I am in my dorm room bunk bed deciding between computer science or econ, data science or actuary. I even make a pro and con list comparing the job prospects, the job security, the salary and the salary growth, the job tasks and projects. Do you ever remember back to key moments in your life where now looking back, you're like, uh-huh. So that was a fork in the road for me and this was the path I chose to take. Well, this was one of those moments for me. In the end, I chose a path of becoming an actuary. So concentrating my applied mathematics degree on economics, it was. And also because computer science seemed very intimidating at that time. I had heard about the stories about people struggling in their classes, pulling all-nighters, and how their classmates had already been coding since they were like 12 years old. There was no way I could compete with that. So during my college summers, I did some actuary internships. My first internship, I loved. It was great colleagues and great manager. I learned a lot, was happy with the money. They invited me back for the following summer, but I decided it would be good to diversify my experiences while I'm still in college. So my next internship was at a different company and a different city. This time, the pay and the perks were even better. So I'm like, amazing, let's keep this up. Yeah, no, 
This was the internship that made me realize that I did not want to be doing this for the next 40 years of my life. So going to senior year, you know, the last year before you graduate and you're supposed to start interviewing and securing those full-time offers. Well, I was doing so and my options with my actuarial background were either insurance, finance, or investment banking. None of those options that I had set myself up for seemed appealing to me anymore. And I think my lack of excitement and commitment really showed during the interview process because in the end, I didn't get any full-time offers. But time until graduation is running short. What option do I have? I go to Germany. Ein Vorsicht, ein Vorsicht. So here I am as this American girl from California with this valley girl accent living in Germany. I enroll at the Technical University of Berlin as a visiting student. And one of the first classes that I take there is in machine learning with Professor Robert Klaus Müller. <laughs> I literally still have the old coursework. And as you can see, it's in English. So bless. This was in winter of 2015. So the rebirth of ML had just happened and machine learning was picking up steam. This was my first time taking a class in this domain and I had essentially zero programming knowledge. I hadn't taken any computer science classes at Berkeley. Both theory and coding was part of this class. The theory part I handled just fine thanks to my math background, but the coding part I had to learn as I went along. And this included everything from Python to Git, Jupyter, and virtual environments. You can imagine how many different versions of Python I had on my local system. Fortunately, I met some really nice classmates who were able to help me catch up with the coding aspect. And machine learning turned out to be this really cool field that I enjoyed. I grasped the concepts well, and I loved that machine learning was so feature forward. Machine learning also gave me exposure to computer vision. So then I take computer vision classes one semester after another. Throughout this time, remember that I'm still a visiting student, and I have no idea with what I'm doing with my life. I'm learning, but I don't know where this is gonna go. At this point, I'm already two years into living in Berlin, which is way longer than I had planned on being there for. Then I got wind of another esteemed university in Germany called the Technical University of Munich. From what I see on their website and browsing their course offerings, their ML CV program seems to be very plentiful and very good and with notable professors. Not to mention, their tuition is like $300 per semester. Yeah, you heard that right. So I apply for their master's in informatics program, equivalent to a master's in computer science, and I get admitted. So now, after three wonderful years in Berlin, the city that made me fall in love with techno, I moved to Munich and I begin my master's at TUM. Here now, I'm taking deep learning and advanced deep learning courses and various 2D and 3D computer vision courses. And since it's a technical university, there were also many practical components to my degree, including semester-long projects and projects within the classes, and also seminars where you read and discuss research papers. One of the notable projects that I worked on was with Professor Matthias Niesner. You might know him from his appearance on Jimmy Kimmel and his work on deepfakes. <laughs> Mr. Mike Tyson. And it was in Professor Niesner's lab that I did work on 3D scene segmentation. And then I did a really cool summer project with Volkswagen, programming robotic arms to avoid collision with moving objects. All these projects gave me great experience for me to apply my theoretical learnings in a hands-on practical way. And now I started to apply to internships. I applied locally in Munich and in Europe because, you know, I wanted to stay and have a European summer. Merci. So what's interesting is that even though I applied to a FANG internship at a European location, because the tech companies I was applying for were based in the US, my application actually got forwarded to the Silicon Valley location. And I mean, I'm from California and I love Europe and all, but if Silicon Valley is calling my name, then you know I'm flying my ass back that way. But instead of going into the office and the super cool tech campuses and getting all those perks and all those legendary parties that you've heard about, this was during the start of the pandemic, so my internship was fully remote. Nevertheless, I worked a lot and I implemented my best ideas 
sometimes not sharing it until I completed it, which is a different corporate girly learning lesson that I can go into another time. At the end of the four month internship, I get a full time offer. This is exactly what I had been striving for and I'm so happy. I tell my family the good news and we're literally hopping around in circles and screaming our heads off. Because me securing this job meant not only securing my future, but also their future. This is my family's collective effort of multiple generations of hard work and risk taking. After the internship, I go back to Germany to finish my master's thesis, which is again remote due to the pandemic. This time my thesis is on object tracking, particularly to predict the trajectories of objects in an autonomous vehicle scenario. The whole time I'm doing my last requirements to graduate, even though the company had already made a verbal offer to me, I was still stressing that like, what if they revoke it? What if their headcount and their budget gets impacted? What if the project gets shut down? All these worries. It wasn't until the day of me actually going to the physical office location, getting my badge, and being shown my desk location that I was a believer. Oh shit, I am actually working for this company. I made it to Silicon Valley. And yeah, that was almost three years ago, and it has been an exciting time with lots of learnings and really cool machine learning projects and applications. It was also my first time working in such a large corporate environment. And for the first two years, I was the only female engineer in my team of 15 engineers. So that added an additional level of complexity for me to navigate. Some tips I would share with you based on my experience in becoming a machine learning engineer. If you're in university right now, get involved in projects. And that can either be with your professor or club organizations or do your own thing with your classmates and friends. Universities are such a right place for learning and getting your hands dirty. Reach out to the relevant people and be persistent. If you're confident in what you can provide, whether that is through your knowledge or your dedication or your curiosity, don't take no for an answer easily. If you're currently in an internship, work your hardest. Secure that return offer, whether you want to come back or not. This is your chance to make the most of the opportunity and use it as leverage for future negotiation conversations. And just to give you an idea of how hard I was pushing myself, I developed ulcers or canker sores all over my mouth. Sorry if that's TMI, but that's the truth. And the stress and fatigue was really taking a toll on my body. It was like this level of bad. It hurt so much to talk or even eat that I started losing weight and got physically weaker. This is in no way medical advice or professional advice. This is simply what worked for me for a four month internship to give it my best shot in securing the full-time offer. If the internship was any longer, I would have had to prioritize my health more because that was not sustainable. If you are not in university or in the industry, I recommend learning what you can of machine learning and deep learning concepts. There are so many online resources available for free because the world is hungry for AI ML people right now. There are a lot of tech layoffs happening right now, but AI ML are among those still in demand simply because companies either want to further their existing AI programs or they want to AIify their existing projects. There's more detail that I can go into for this, like specific skills like Python and version control and which research papers you should be reading and computer vision fundamentals. But since this video is already quite long, I can do that in another video. And if there's any takeaway that you can get from this video, hopefully it includes pursue what you want to do, but also be flexible enough to pivot once you realize that it is no longer what you want to do. Maybe be so flexible that this is your sign to move all the way to the other side of the world. Sometimes I look back at my applied mathematics degree and I wonder if I had chosen computer science instead of econ, how differently my life would be. I mean, I eventually landed in a programming role, so what if I became a programmer right after my bachelor's degree instead of my master's degree? I probably would have saved a lot more time and even made more money along the way. But life is not but a straight path, but rather a long winded road. And now my life has been a lot more enriched for it. Now I can speak a third language. Deutsch ist anhalt meine dritte Sprache. I have a French accent that is fun to play with at parties. And I have a passport with nearly all the pages stamped. It just depends on what you want to make of your life. 
Picking what feels right to you in the moment is oftentimes the decision that you were meant to make for yourself. All right, this was so much fun. I hope to help you out in some way or form. Comment on anything you want to hear about in the future and I'll see you next time. Well, it's my first video if I do zero indexing, but if I do one indexing, then it would be nice.